Okay, so you just clicked on this video. Should you be counting macros or not? We're about to tell you right now. What's good everybody? Welcome back to another video. So Ross and I are gonna discuss why you should or shouldn't be tracking macros. So if you've been following me for a really long time, you know I'm really, big on tracking macros but that being said i'm not your average joe Smo down the street guys i've been doing bodybuilding for years now going on eight years uh, i got into tracking macros very early on in my career i understand the importance of it but at the same time i also understand that it could be a huge huge pain in the ass uh, especially for ross and i you know ross and i are both coaches ross is my coach Ross also has a coach, and his coach also has a coach. So don't think just because oh God, it's like coach you know, inception. It is just because someone has a coach doesn't mean they don't know shit. Okay, so just FYI, um, Tom Brady has a coach. Exactly, he's the best and quarterback he, ever. He's the goat. Exactly. Yeah. So when people come to me and they want to hire me as their coach, uh, I'm really big on tracking macros. Now, again, like I said, tracking macros can get very, very complicated. Uh, we'll use an example. If my mom wanted to hire me as a coach, or if my mom wanted me to coach, she wouldn't have to hire me. I've got coaching for free. Ruthless, bro. Mom, if you're watching, uh, I understand that it'd be really tough for her to understand the whole concept of macros. What are macros? You know, not everybody knows what macros are. Uh, how do you count them? What do you do? Um, my biggest recommendation is to use an app. So you use this to your advantage. The things that this phone can do for you and make your life easier is endless. So downloading a food tracker app, one of the my best recommendation food tracker apps is uh, MyFitnessPal. It's been around for years. You can grab foods, bag of foods, whatever cans of foods or whatever food you buy, um, for the most part, nine out of 10 are gonna have a barcode. You can scan that barcode then boom, it throws it right into the app for you and it breaks down fats, carbs, and proteins so you know how much you're getting throughout the day. So you do that with every single food. You also have to weigh your food as well. You gotta weigh out you know, your chicken, your rice, and then you plug that into the app. So as you can see, it does get a little daunting, especially for someone just getting in to uh, counting macros. But again, I believe that is very, very important. Um, especially for someone like me, I, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a bodybuilder. I've been doing bodybuilding for years now. I want to know how much protein I had throughout the week. I want to know how much fat I had throughout the week. So that way I can kind of like recap my week and say, you know what? I had a really good workout all these weeks. So what, what did I eat? Oh, okay. My protein was on point. My fat was on point. My carbs were on point. Or if I had a crappy week, go back and look like, Ah, well, you know what? That's why. Because look at this. I did fast food Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. I did fast food Burger King. I did lazy keto here and there. Uh, and I got away from my home cooked foods. So, you know, for me, it's all about data, tracking, and understanding uh, what I'm eating, what I'm putting into my body, and understanding the numbers. And again, it could get really confusing for beginners. So Ross has his method. I want Ross to explain um, kind of like how he goes about tracking and does he believe in tracking? What does he have his clients do? So kind of tell him your, yeah. um, your method. So one of the reasons I love doing these videos with, with Logan is because we always have two different two different perspectives. Yeah. So oftentimes he's, he's the good cop and I'm the bad cop. And I think it's crucial for understanding and getting to your goal is literally fit, seeing all these different perspectives yeah. because with all these different perspectives, the end goal for, for us as coaches or individuals is always the same. How can we become the best you know, version of ourselves, and how can we accomplish our goals? And there's a million different ways to do that. And I think learning the different avenues and different thought processes is imperative. So I'm going to go on the exact opposite route of what Logan is, is saying. But again, Logan is not wrong. This is just what he does. His <clears throat> clients get success. My clients get success. I always look at the big picture. Um, in, ev in every situation. So rather than just having my clients, you know, have their plan, hey, you're gonna eat 200 grams of protein, you're gonna eat 200 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat, use your app tracker and sort of figure it out, I'm gonna go the inverse. I'm gonna tell them what to eat. I don't want them to figure out the macros because at the end of the day, in my opinion, that doesn't really matter. Um, I want them to educate themselves and I want them, in, instead of picking up the, the MyFitnessPal 
and showing them that, okay, I just ate 50 grams of carbs. I want them to pick up the label and say, how did I get to 50 grams of carbs in this meal? Okay, well, I had a cup of oats, which is uh, 80 grams of oats yields this amount. So I like to have give them the opportunity to learn for themselves so that way they don't need me in the long run and they can do it themselves. That's not saying that I don't track macros, but every client, I was talking with Logan before we made this video, say Joe hires me and Joe is eating sporadic meals and eating about 1500 calories a day. He's over fat, he's unhealthy, he has no energy, his sleep sucks, his hormone sucks, everything about him is just in the dirt and we need to get him up. So if I come up with a calculation or if I go on a food tracker app and it's telling me that Joe needs to eat 2600 calories just to maintain his weight, I know Joe is gonna fail. I've been doing this a long time. For him to go from these this extreme to this extreme right off, right off the bat, I know Joe's success is rate. Joe's success rate is not going to be fairly, fairly high. So what I wanna do is I wanna just slowly bring him up and I want him to be successful each week. So the way I get that, I'll, I'll come up with like a base protein amount, which Logan has talked about before, about a gram per lean, lean muscle, not body weight, because if we have a 400 pound woman, she's got 30 pounds of muscle. I don't want her to eat 400 grams of protein. We're gonna eat 150 grams of protein. We're gonna eat 150 grams of carbs, 60 grams of fat. Now I'm gonna track his week and if Joe hits those markers and he's ready for more food, then I'm gonna slowly bump up according to his, uh, his feedback. I just think that when you're consumed, like we're super busy, Logan's super busy, I'm super busy. The last thing we wanna do is have to worry about um, you know, entering all of our food at the end of the day and seeing, hey, I'm short 80 grams of carbs. What do I have to do? Like I just had a consultation with a, with a woman whose coach would just give them macros and she what she would do is she had FOMO, which is fear of missing out. She'd eat maybe 600 calories throughout the day and she'd had FOMO at the end of the night and she'd try to cram all those calories at the end of the night, which she did not get any results. She was able to fit pizzas into her diet but that didn't change her body composition, didn't change her weight, didn't make herself any happier. Yeah. Um, but she was hitting all her macros. So I think there's a way, there is a way, the, the way that should be is to sort of merge the two. And I like consistent meals. That's what I did with Logan. He had amazing results. Yeah. Consistent meals, know what you're eating. So you're gonna have to know your macros to so track them regardless whether you're your coach is just giving you a plan or that you go into the week with a plan and you're putting in your foods. Now, the issue I have with the food tracker, there's two issues. One, they're, some of them are incredibly inaccurate because they're almost like Wikipedia where people are just entering whatever. Like I know that I've had clients say, I'm eating 80 grams of carbs. I'm like, no, you're not, you're eating 25. Well, my fitness pal app is saying that half a cup of rice is 80 grams of carbs. I'm like, no, it's not, it's just not. The other issue I have with it is that people use it backwards. So instead of having a plan, they're literally just eating whatever and just trying to fit it in their day. They should do the inverse. They should have a plan, a game plan of any sort, put it into the, the, the fitness pal app or whatever food tracker is. And then you can see, Hey, I only have 200 grams of, sorry, 200 calories left in the day. Is that within my acceptable range versus I have 800 calories left and I have to go to sleep in in 30 minutes. I just screwed up my whole day. So I think people sometimes use it in a reverse order where they're just eating. Oh, I'm going to McDonald's. Let me put that in. Oh, I had a, a go-gurt. Let me put that in. There's, it's just anarchy and they're trying to fit it in. I think that yeah. it needs to have a plan and then you go ahead and put it in. Yeah. And that, that does make a great point. Cause I did, I did used to struggle with that in the beginning. So literally I would put all my food in and at the end of the night, uh, I would, I, again, I'm doing keto. So at the end of the night, I'm like, crap i hit all my protein i hit all my carbs but i have 40 grams of fat left so what, what does he do what can i eat that's just 40 grams straight coconut oil straight coconut oil straight butter and yes i would have to do that and so the, that way does suck and it's it's much better to have a plan and and in that situation now he's potentially screwing up his sleep because if he has to say let's see let's say he's behind 40 grams of protein and 40 grams of fat and he's got to go to bed at 30 minutes He's gonna eat, what, seven ounces of steak and a whole avocado? That's gonna sit in his gut, yeah. not gonna digest. Yeah. He's not gonna get results. He's not gonna get sleep. So now all those macros that he just 
you know, hit on target literally mean nothing if we're not digesting them. So I think there should always be an asterisk. Did I hit my, my macros? Yes. What was the quality of my macros? And what was the quality of the digestion? Did I skip all, you know, the whole day and I did one meal a day and ate, you know, 2000 calories and then went to bed. So there's always should be a little asterisk that you should always ask yourself, you know, an honest question. Is it really working for me? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think, you know, you're watching this video, you're probably confused. You're like, okay, well, Ross is saying don't, Logan's saying do it. Like, well, what do I do? I think at the, be the, the, the best recommendation that we can give you is, is it helping you? At the end of the day, Ross just, just nailed it on the head. Is it helping you? If you find that tracking macros is really just stressing you out, it, you're kind of, you feel like you're doing it the wrong way because you're just cramming whatever mm -hmm. fits, like this, like a puzzle piece, you're like, this fits, this fits, this fits. And at the end of the night, every night, you're just like, just trying to find some made up puzzle piece that will fit there. If that's what you're doing, then obviously it's not working for you. Again, like I said in the very beginning, I'm not your average Joe Smo, so I've been doing this for years now. So for me to say tracking macros is easy, yes, that's just me though. But if, like I, like I said, using my mom as an example, there's no way. My mom would be like, this is stupid. Like, I don't just tell me what I have to eat. I don't want to have to figure it out and do all this craziness. Um, it does take time, but that being said, I still believe that tracking macros is, is something that you should do. Even if you are doing it Ross's way, as far as like you have a meal plan, you know what you're eating, you know what's high quality foods, I, I, you should probably at least know what you're putting in, how much you're putting into your body. You should know so that that way, if someone asks you like, "Hey, how much like you know how much protein you're eating?" You know exactly. So like. Oh, I don't know. I just blindly followed this plan. I have awesome results, which is good. Uh, I lost inches in the waist. I look better than I've ever looked in before. But you but, have no idea. But I really don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? Like you, you should put in some effort into figuring out. Like, well, you know what? It's it's because I'm doing this, this, and that. Because that way, the more and more you learn, you're not just literally relying on Ross mm -hmm. or any coach out there. Like. Take some initiative. Like I said, at the end of the day, our our job is to get you in the best shape of your life, but then also like teach you. Like we just don't want to just grab a fish and just give it to you. We want to teach you how to fish eventually. We want you to be able to do this on your own eventually. Make it a habit, a lifestyle that you're able to be like, man, like dude, like Ross, Logan, thank you, or whoever, Coach X, you guys did you I've been working with you for months now. I think I think it's time for me to go on my own. And that's when we're just like Mm -hmm. Awesome. Graduated. You, you graduated. That's awesome. You did a great job. So I think it's I think it's 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 to really sit back and be like, okay, like you're right, Logan. Tracking is good, but I'm not there yet. I'm I want to know what to eat, you know, how much I should be eating, and and because Ross, like I said, he doesn't put that on his clients. Like you don't put tracking on no. your clients, but you're doing the tracking. Yeah. You you know their matters. Right. So if I want to, if I need them to drop let's say 500 calories a week, I know I'm gonna drop 25 grams of carbs every single day for five days. There's your 500 calories or whatever. Um, so that's that's what I do. So, but, so, so do you see what he's saying? He has the macros already in his head, like of, of that person. He knows that person. And that comes macros. down to knowing the, knowing the food. <clears throat> so I know that you know an, an average size apple is gonna be about 25, 22 yeah. grams of carbs. So add that in, take it out. So there you go, guys. I, I hope you did learn something from this video. Uh, or at least like, hey, if you're watching this and you're kind of on the fence about maybe tracking, maybe not. Again, there's much other important things out there uh, than just tracking, again, food quality, how many meals, where are your meals coming from. Again, you guys know me. I used to do, I used to be really big on lazy keto, fast food keto, and always wonder why I never had the success I had on the keto cut this year as I did in the previous years. I wonder why. Well, it's because I did a lot of cooking and I ate a lot of clean foods all day. But that's another story for a different day. We're talking about tracking macros. So hopefully this did um, sway your decision whether you should be tracking or not be tracking. At the end of the day, you just need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Is it is it truly helping you or is it hurting you? If it's helping you, then continue it. If it's not, uh, if it's kind of hindering your progress, stop it. If you're stressing about it, stop it. If you're just plugging in puzzle pieces at the end of the night and just hoping something fits, mm -hmm. stop it. So there you go. 
Um, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're following Ross and I on Instagram. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.